Hello friends, I am Dr. Tormay Vishrash. I welcome you all in my channel Climate and Chemistry. Today's topic of discussion is Canadian sand oil. Is it an environmentally disaster or not? Let's start. So today's content is, is sand oil economically profitable and why the extraction started and its impact on the environment. So, before going to details, one MCQ, which hydrocarbon contribution is relatively higher in natural gas? Four options are provided. I request you please pause the video and write your answer in the comment box. And definitely at the end of the discussion, I shall write, give you the right answer. Now, the most important thing, economics. Is sand oil economically profitable? <clears throat> Actually, answer is no. If you consider royalty as the gain and legacy is the investment. So, in this case, royalty is gain, legacy is investment. So, what is the net profit? Royalty minus legacy. For conventional oil or petroleum, it is positive, means there is a profit. If you see natural gas, there is relatively more profit. And if you see oil sand, surprisingly, this is significantly negative, means it is actually a loss making industry. But see why this industry going on? Because huge amount of cash flow and employment and indirectly it helps the economy of this country. That's why. So, if you look at this in little more dif di different angle, so this is actually the production cost versus total recoverable liquid reserves. Now, if you look at the case of this Canadian sand oil, its production cost is near about 83. And by the way, what is this break haven prices? This is the amount of money which a product or service must be sold to cover the manufacturing cost. So you may consider in short, it's a production cost. So the production cost is $83. Now what is the oil price right now? The day I'm recording is near about 73 US dollar. So is this oil selling profitable today? Obviously not. If you compare this thing with the Middle East onshore, the production cost is $42. So, and if you compare the quality of these two oil, this Middle East oil is lighter, more energy rich, whereas this sand oil is a heavy crude bitumen and less energy rich. So, quality wise it's less, second its production cost is higher. So, consequently it is not profitable at today also. So question why this extraction happened started? Don't we have enough, enough supply of traditional oil? The answer uh, is little complicated. First of all, we have enough or significant supply of petroleum. We have proven reserve, but because of geopolitics like the oil, uh, the geopolitics like Arab oil embargo in 1973, 1979 Iranian revolution, 1990 Persian Gulf crisis and war, 2001 11 September attack or 2003 invasion of Iraq. Actually all these situations are all these conflict are in Middle East which is the main oil production zone. So now this is important for US to shift its energy de uh, dependence from this Middle East to some other places because US is the most the major con consumer of oil at that time. It is I am telling about the before of shale gas time, shale oil time. So consequently, what you uh, happened, the Canadian crude sand extraction started and the majority of oil is transported or sold to US through pipelines. So consequently, you can understand this is not only based on pure profit and loss equation, some geopolitics also involved, but it is a loss making organization. So consequently, economically, it's not profitable and it is also disastrous for the environment that's why some people call these oil as dirty oil too why because if you look at canada's map the majority of its population resides in the us canada border fine and if you look at this green part this is actually the boreal forest this is the world's largest land biome and it's a green cover so it consumes carbon dioxide so it's a carbon dioxide sink and in recently COP26 meeting all country have told that they'll reduce their CO2 emission. Not only that after certain time they will reach the net zero and till now we have already increased global temperature 1.2 degree and the target in COP26 meeting is 1.5 degree. Consequently if we emit, emit that much amount of carbon in this rate 
So very soon we will achieve this 1.5 degree rate and not only 1.5 degree there is another target that is 2 degree centigrade increase in global average temperature compared to the industrial time there is a Paris climate agreement. If we achieve this target we will make us vulnerable towards climate calamities and it will be a issue for our climate security. So lots of problems are there. So consequently this is the issue and recently the this is the Alberta you can say where the Canadian sand oil is extracted. Its closer neighbor that is British Columbia has witness of a huge Canadian heat dome some month before and very recently this com uh, province have faced huge amount of flood that is Vancouver flood and all these abnormal climate conditions are because of this global warming and climate change. So this is a polluting CO2 emitting thing country producing for its economic prosperity its citizen but its citizens are facing the disastrous consequences of climate change because of excessive CO2 emission in or excessive CO2 presence into the atmosphere and this CO2 is mainly coming because of our day to day energy production need. And if you look at little closely means zoom version you can see these are the oil fields in between the forest. So that is why it is dangerous for the ecology too. And if you look at this thing from satellite it is so big that you can see in between a green zone or forest you can see these places which is actually green free or you can say the trees are consumed means this is actually utilized for this oil extraction if you look at the if and this the scale here it is actually 5 kilometer scale. And if you look at uh, the data between 2001 to 13 seven seven five thousands of hectares are consumed because of its tar sand region it is increasing because of the production increase. Second thing because of this a huge amount of boreal forest, forest has been consumed and because of this oil production thing the water became toxic and the marine food like fishes are not consumable and you can see one report on energy mix scientifically valid evidence shows tar sand or oil sand trailing ponds contaminating northern Alberta's groundwater. I shall come about this trailing pond. So in this way you can understand because of this industrial activity the groundwater getting contaminated because the carcinogenic compound from oil refinery plant is mixing to the water. Question how? For that purpose you need to understand the oil sand mining process. There are two types of mining. One is surface mining and another is underground mining. Actually surface mining contributes 20 percent of the total mining in this Canadian oil sand. So in this case first this oil containing oil sand thing are uh, dead means taken and put into a crusher and this crushed particle stored in surge bin. Later on it is mixed with hot water and this hot water mixed uh, this oil is important because this is actually a bitumen what we are discussing it is actually almost semi solid tar type material you can consider in order and it is not movable. So in order to extract oil from this first of all what we need to do we need to heat it and the hot water does that job after it is rotated consequently the sand actually the oil is con composed of sand clay and water. So consequently the sand clay and water got precipitated out or settled down or come in the bottom layer and bitumen goes to the upper layer because the density of hydrocarbon is lesser than water and it is stored. So bitumen is taken from the above separator and these waters containing sand and some amount of bitumen or hydrocarbon in this water and some toxic material are stored in a pond this is called trailing pond. Now you can understand the water is needed on most a stoichiometric amount compared to the oil means a significant ratio. So if you increase the oil production consequently will also increase the wastewater production and Canada has a huge supply of water because it is a water rich country very less populated and it is in between a jungle forest. So that is not that much issue from water crisis also. So huge amount of water is produced and these water are stored on a surface actually they recycle this water but still because of huge production of this oil huge amount of water is stored in this plant and this is not a simple amount this is near about 
2 trillion liter of such kind of contaminated water stored in 19 trailing pond in the Athabasca oil region. And this area, this pond, trailing pond actually covers near about 220 square kilometer and you can compare this thing, it is a half of the Indian city Mumbai where near about 1.7 crore people live. So, from this thing you can understand a huge amount of land is covered with tr trillions liters of toxic water and one day they need to release this toxic water to environment and that will be a huge disaster. Not only that, this trailing pond water soaked from this pond and goes to the underground and contaminated this. And remember this maintenance of such kind of ponds are cost effective. If the oil business is making loss on a regular basis, then how a company can invest significant amount such that such kind of toxic mixing could be prevented. Ultimately everything is business. So that is why this is a huge concern for environment because of this thing. And why this is dangerous? Because this wastewater contains suspended solid mixture of salts and other dissolved chemical compounds such as asphaltins, cresols, phenols, these acids, benzene, thalates, toluene, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, these all are carcinogenic compound and significant it is observed that many people are suffering from some different type of cancers because of such contamination in that locality region. So, not only that a disaster also happened that is the death of 31 great blue herons and for that purpose the Syncrude which was the company responsible for this uh, oil extraction was fined 2.75 million dollar because of this death. Actually what happened this migratory bird did not understand what is the toxic pond and what is the natural pond because of their common habit they landed on the pond and because of the toxicity of that water they are died. So, this is very sad because 31 uh, these birds are died because of human irresponsible activities. Although I would say that such kind of companies are responsible in their many aspects but more responsible behavior is needed in order to counter such kind of environmental uh, catastrophes or better to say such kind of accidents. Now, another point is that the CO2 emission. This oil sand actually contributes 11 percent of Canada's greenhouse gas emission and 0.15 percent of global greenhouse gas emission. This is really concerning thing because this oil is not energy rich, this oil is not making profit for the country, but this is emitting CO2 and according to COP26 summit every country need to come needs zero at a certain time they have to come and for that purpose they need to invest. So, it is not a good option to emit huge amount of CO2 on a regular basis through unprofitable way such that the government need to pay more in the future. So, maybe for temporary time it is profitable, but in future it is not. But some good news is that this oil sand CO2 emission have reduced significantly in uh, compared to 1990 E, 2005 and you can see 2080. So, it significantly reduced that is a good thing, but overall such kind of oil mining should be reduced to save the environment. Now, one another article you can see that this Canadian sand oil CO2 emission this leads 64 percent higher annual greenhouse gas emission from surface mining operation. Now, a question why this means every case this surface mining is res telling responsible, but why this happens? Why do not we go underground mining in that case we do not need to uh, clean up huge amount of forest, water pollution is not that much issues and why does? Because in case of surface mining less than 90 percent of hydrocarbon could be recovered, whereas in underground mining near about 30 percent oil could be recovered and this is huge energy extensive process because bitumen is not movable. So, you need to heat such that oil flows and then through creating a pressure this oil could be extracted. So, that is the reason that surface mining is still going on although it is creating huge amount of pollution for the environment. So, what do you think? Should we use such kind of oil or not? Please write your answer in the comment box. I am really eager to listen your opinion. Now, I have some personal opinion too. 
that the government and oil companies should jointly invest for renewable sector in Canada. Why? Because companies are for making profit. So they need to survive also. For that purpose, they need to shift their investment from this dirty oil business to renewable energy sector and renewable is the future for our planet. And for example, this agro waste with ethanol, green hydrogen, even nuclear power generation from both uranium and thorium. And I have already discussed in a dedicated lecture how thorium could be a potential fuel for our near future. But technological development is essential. And most important thing for such kind of prosperity is that Canada has a stable government. That's a good thing. Is stable government and responsible educated citizen. So we can expect that they'll cooperate the authority during this uh, transition because the Athabasca oil sand uh, oil sand production or mining is responsible for huge amount of revenue and job opportunity for the state of Alberta. If such oil destruction stops, then what happened to the job of the, those people? That is the question. And the answer is that those people could be utilized for reforestation and environmental cleanup project first. They could be shifted to the renewable energy sector. So proper training and proper governmental policy is essential for that purpose. And the biggest question, where the energy will come? Because ultimate mining is for to extract energy. And where it will come? One of very famous solution is one sun, one world, one grid. So globe could connect together through solar power and they send or transport or export their excess energy to another country. And not only that, country like Canada, which is not getting significant amount of sunlight, could be benefited from this project. And if they don't want to connect to the uh, planetary grid, they can also utilize the lands or better to the desert lands in United States. So they can produce the energy from there and they can import it to their country. In this way, both United States and Canada will be benefited. And the last statement, what is the true meaning of a superpower if we can convince all for the betterment of this planet? Because superpower, everyone will listen to the superpower. So they need to convince properly. And the most important statement, I believe, Earth is our home, not our temporary residence. So we should keep it as much clean as possible because we consider our planet as mother. We say mother nature. So let's come to the MCQ. Which hydrocarbon contributes contribution is relatively higher in natural gas? I repeat, relatively higher in natural gas. So when we listen about the world natural gas, we consider that, okay, the main component is methane, but no methane is written. So is the question right or wrong? Obviously right. In this case, I told relatively higher and the answer is ethane. Okay, since methane is not included in any option and if you look at the chart, the contribution of methane is near about 95% whereas the second position belongs to ethane, contribution 4.2%, propane 0.2 and isobutane 0.02 and hydrogen is also 0.02. So answer is this ethane. So this is the end of this discussion. Thanks for watching. If possible, please subscribe my other chemistry related channel, Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. And I have already uploaded a dedicated lecture on the refining of this Albertan sand oil in my second channel. Please visit for better.